CD Projekt Red has announced that they will honor refunds for last-gen console games due to the poor performance of Cyberpunk on those platforms. Could this be the shining example of why Halo Infinite's delay is needed? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gaming info news video talking about some Halo and some Cyberpunk and how they're kind of tied together when it comes to their delays. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with gaming, especially Halo, make sure you tap subscribe and make sure you like the video guys as it greatly helps out this channel, gets more support and more people get a chance to see this video to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. Through the official Cyberpunk Twitter, CD Projekt Red issues out an apology to all the last gen console players out there who are currently playing and it's been quite the news going around the gaming community about the poor performance on the last gen hardware. And in this video, I wanted to show why Halo Infinite's delay was so needed. And I think we can use Cyberpunk as an excellent example of what we would see if we had Halo Infinite playable right now for everybody. And one thing a lot of games do is kind of dwindle out down the amount of geometry and items within an area to compensate for the PC versus the console version. So this is like the gameplay trailer that we first saw of the open world of Cyberpunk. You see this, it's alive, it's open. There are so many people walking around. This looks like a living, breathing city. Like this is something that you would expect to have for like a next gen experience, right? Well, let's check over how the PlayStation 4 version looks. Now, this is PlayStation 4 Pro and you can kind of see walking around through the town, not a whole lot of people walking around through here. Now this is definitely something you would expect to see when it comes to next gen versus past gen kind of gaming that you know that they would have to lower down the amount of people within an area just to kind of compensate for the weaker hardware. Here's another example just showing low res textures and yeah obviously this would be something you see on it. This is on the PlayStation 4 as well. You can kind of see look at these garbage bags and how just low texture quality they are. We did see this happen a lot with actually with Halo 4 because originally Halo 4 was supposed to be a next gen console game on the Xbox One. Xbox decided they wanted it out on the 360 in, the tw in 2012. So you saw a lot of this kind of stuff happening with low res texturing just to kind of ease the load that you would see on you know, the last gen consoles. Now this next section, I think is something you really need to check out. And this is the frame performance on the last gen consoles. You can see just in this intro scene, you're in a bar, you're just kind of looking at a mirror and you're kind of dipping around 25 frames inside the interior areas actually kind of seem to be about right. We're around 30. It's kind of what you would expect to see on the last gen console experience, but it really dips once you get into these outdoor areas where if they render out a lot of people in the area, a lot of different motion and things going on, but it's really in these outdoor areas where you really see the issues kind of come alive. I think it was what's kind of allowing these refunds to happen for the game. Once you get outside these moving dynamic kind of almost actually this scene next coming up is actually more of a scripted event that happens to everybody. You can see the frame rates dumping into like the to low 20s to the you know the mid to high teens, which is if you're playing like a shooter game where it involves precision accuracy in like a live, you know, move, you know, high, fast action moving situation, you need to have a decent frame rate. And you can see over here with Cyberpunk, it's really, I mean, really struggling in this section. This is kind of throughout the entire situation. Here's another example from Twitter. So this might be a little grainy at first, guys, because that's what Twitter does. But you can kind of see like this guy right here. This is like a blurred blob of a human that we get to see right here. And how slow that texture resolution comes in. Look, he just sits into the car like, um, yeah, this game isn't really exactly functional too well on you know last gen consoles here's one that's been going pretty much viral this has just under 800 million 800 views on this video right here you can see just driving through night city like you as you would as you do in the game and you kind of get to this one section you can see how long it takes for these texture quality to pop in like it's just and the geometry is so low res as well trying to compensate for just such old slow hardware like it's still loading it's still loading it's still loading there you go like it's crazy guys, which then makes me wonder, is the Xbox One version gonna be looking like this? Like this is a fan created N64 version of the Halo Infinite trailer, but you can kind of see like, is this how the game is going to look when it comes to like the release of it? You know, as an exaggeration of it, but like they might have to tone down to like this kind of low level of gameplay quality just to have it run properly on, you know, the old hardware. Cause we do know that, you know, they. Promise it's going to be on last gen and it should be on last gen because it needs to have that population be able to play Halo. Just like this is kind of what I'm, I'm afraid of what we're going to be seeing for the next gen consoles because 
know, what kind of compromises will they have to make on the Xbox One to make sure Halo Infinite runs properly? So now your initial reaction is probably, well, let's just, you know, remove the last gen console, just do the new series of X consoles and PC, and we just not do the Xbox One whatsoever. Well, you can't necessarily do that because you need the population to be able to play the game, especially for the multiplayer side of things, to have a healthy level of competition there. Majority of people still own last gen hardware, so you need to be able to have the game available out for as many people as possible. And Microsoft's recent kind of ecosystem has been just if you're playing on anything Microsoft related, you should be able to play your game, be that a phone, a console, a PC whatever. And right now, the series consoles are actually pretty tough to come across unless you're like a guy who's just on top of their alerts as soon as it becomes available, you're able to beat the bots and all the thirsty people trying to get new consoles. They're actually kind of hard to get. You know, Phil Spencer has mentioned that he feels that maybe a Halo Infinite release in the fall, which is going to happen, would suit better because consoles will be more available then. I mean, as of October 2020, there were almost 49 million Xbox One consoles that have been sold. Compared to that Series X consoles, they're sitting around like three to four million items sold. So way fewer population there. You need to have the game on the last gen hardware no matter the cost really. Now we do know that Halo Infinite is planned to have a 10 year plan for the game. Now you would also think that, okay, for 10 years, one game, how's the graphics gonna hold up? Well, the great thing about Slip Space Engine is that they've coded it in a way to have upgrade over time. Now I saw something similar happen with actually Diablo 3 with the Reaper of Souls update. They actually updated the graphics in that game as well to have much better particle effects, better lighting, visuals, and just overall better visual presentation of the game. I would suspect that something similar happened with the Slip Space Engine that they would, would be able to increase the graphics over time, that 10 year plan that they mentioned. Well, the graphics we're going to get on a release date are not going the whole true. Eventually, the last gen consoles will be phased out, much like we saw with like Destiny and Destiny 2, that we'd see the same thing happen with Halo Infinite and maybe like a year or two after the release of the game's official release, we'd actually see like a full visual presentation of what the game's going to be like. But for right now, like, you know, lower the game quality a little bit just so then the people on the last gen hardware don't feel like they got shortchanged and gypped like we saw with Cyberpunk. We don't want to see 343 come out issuing an apology for last gen hardware and have to issue refunds. Because you have to remember that the gameplay demo for Halo Infinite was played on a PC that was meant to mimic the hardware of an Xbox Series X. And we all know the kind of issues we saw there with pop in textures, geometry, and or lighting, you know, flat texturing and things like that. So, you know, there was a lot to be improved on. That was on a PC. And we do know that 343 has actually spent a lot of time to improve the visual presentation of Halo Infinite. In the last development update, they talked about improving the texturing, improving the lighting, you know, improving the performance as well. This, the game sounds rather content complete as Joseph Staten has played through the campaign multiple times now at this point. And they even do mention Craig, saying he's actually gonna probably get some facial hair, some better facial animations as well. Just so when the game actually releases, it feels more alive live than stagnant. But for Halo Infinite to avoid a situation that we've seen right now with Cyberpunk, Infinite needs to be delayed and probably an entire year is probably the best way to go about doing it. But let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts on this whole topic are as well as I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If you've been the loop for the last few days, check out the videos on the screen or over here. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been missing anything recently. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.